once you've got one successful enterprise social enterprise then it gives people courage to think that it is a, a realistic solution to fulfilling a need and so there's like a snowball effect but primarily it's we would go without if we didn't combine our efforts succinctly if there are uh, if there is a need that no particular individual can satisfy in their own rights then the only solution is to combine with other like-minded people um, because you cannot rely on outside services or or communities when you haven't got good transport links and we are so geographically isolated and we have such long hard winters they're all very significant factors I think. I think there are a lot of social enterprises in Alston because it's kind of a twofold thing. One is out of necessity um, that small businesses have to sort of set themselves up in a creative manner just in order to generate an income. And so um, I think Alston Moor, because of its sort of rural isolation, has a lot of really creative people that live up here. And... Um, They've come with ideas, they're dynamic, they're passionate about the things that they do. So we have a lot of craft people and a lot of independent, you know, like the, like the bakery, like the whole food shop, people who really want to set up something unusual and unique to this area. And I think also it's to do with sort of the economics up here. You know, people have to be self-reliant. We have to sort of try everything in order to gain an income up here you know there simply isn't jobs you know for, for everybody so you either have to travel long distances or you have to be creative and um, take your own initiative really but I mean I think the fact that there are so many social enterprises up here is really beneficial to Alston Moor it makes it a very unique place it makes it a very sort of dynamic place it's always changing it's an interesting place for people to visit and I think it's a really good example of what can be achieved in a very remote area um, without necessarily the support of the sort of, you know, government agencies or the agencies that you find in towns and cities. Um, I think it's very much about people um, getting on with it and doing their own thing. I think there's lots of, lo there's lots of reasons actually. One of the, the obvious one is that we're a you know we're um, a small population surrounded by a great deal of moorland and sheep and there's nothing in there's no habitation whichever way you go for miles really so we're really geographically very isolated and i think over the years a lot of people who've moved to the area have been um You've, you've got to be pretty self-reliant to want to move to Alston. <laughs> so I think we've got a critical mass of, uh, of committed and... Um... Enterprising types, really. I think so social enterprise in Alston has been absolutely brilliant. I mean, we've been social enterprises way over 10 years here. I'm just thinking of the, the whole food shop that's way over 10 years old. And it, it's about people getting together and saying, what we want is, or what we need is, and saying, right, well, let's just get on and do it. Uh, and that, that's the big thing about Austin, is people do just get on and do it. And yes, it's, it's identifying needs, and not every need can be met by government funding, nice as it would be. So currently, I think Austin is well served by social enterprises. It's very difficult making anything pay in Austin. It's a very small population. So there's a limited amount of money circulating, a lot of people work away, so it's difficult getting that money circulating. I think what's really important is that people who live on Alston Moor really value their social enterprises and their, their ordinary enterprises, you know, people in business, you know, because it is their livelihood. Um, that they value those and they use them and they don't lose them, it really is important. And to you know, be on the boards, to be involved, to volunteer, and just to go and buy stuff at these places. I think there are possibly so many social enterprises in Alston because of the the nature that you can employ lots of staff and they're all 
um, kind of part time in a way. You're not that you're not having to pay salaries, and especially if everyone's on in a co-op, you're all sharing the same money, so you haven't got to stump up with all these huge salaries every year. If the businesses do not very well, everyone alters their wages accordingly, which you can't do in, in a normal structure of employment. So I think that's probably why they do very well here. The location must be something in the mix for the social enterprises here because there's so many of them. And maybe because you've got 20 miles of nothing and not a lot of people drive. So if you can get a job here and if even if it's a part-time job that you're in a co-op of, that's better than having to get on a bus or a train and go and get a job in Hexham or Carlisle. So I can see the draw for employees wanting to get a local job. This, this is one of, of many, many projects like this in the area. Um, not snowplow projects, but other um, local, local initiatives. And uh, it's a, this is a lovely area to be in. I mean, Alston has, has lots of, of projects like this, and I'm not quite sure why. It's probably because we're a remote sort of cut-off area where public services are pretty lousy by and large, although the county council do a decent job on the main roads, but by and large we're short of services and people have been accustomed, especially in bad winters in the past, to get on with life anyway because nobody else is going to do it for you. And and there's that sort of can do, yeah, we'll, we'll have to do it because nobody else is interested in us sort of attitude I think, which is, is inherent in this area and explains why there's so many of these sort of projects.